Hi friends. Today we are going to discuss some numericals on the chapter motion in a straight line. So let us see the first question. Which of the graphs represent one dimension motion of the particle? Explain why others do not represent one dimension motion. So we are given with six graphs. So we have to check which of the following graphs represent one dimension motion and if they do not represent one dimension motion we have to explain why so let us see one by one so initially let us consider the first graph so we are given with a next t graph that is position time graph before going to that question let me consider an example i am considering a horizontal surface okay and let me assume this is point A. I am standing at this point A. Okay. Now what is happening is I am moving towards right. And initially let me take uh, when I started my journey towards right the time was t is equal to 0 second. Then after some time I reached B. Say at time t is equal to 5 second. So I started my journey at point A when time was equal to 0. Then after 5 seconds I reached point B. Okay. Now I am at point B. So what can we understand from this? At time t is equal to 0 second I am at point A. And at time t is equal to 5 seconds I am at point B. So at time t equal to 0 second I can only occupy which position? Position A. And at time t equal to 5 seconds I can only position B. I cannot occupy position A and B at the same time, right? At t equal to 0, I cannot occupy position A and B, right? Which means at any given time, I can only occupy one position. It is not possible to occupy two positions at a certain time, right? So let us see this question now. Let me consider a time, say a time t is equal to 2 second. Okay, what happens here? Let me see the corresponding position so if i draw what happens at time t is equal to two seconds the graph is indicating that it is occupying two positions at time t is equal to two seconds the graph is indicating that the particle is occupying two positions let us take it x1 and x2 is it possible it is not possible for a particle to occupy two different positions at the same time which is evident from this example itself, right? So we can say this graph is not possible. Okay, so if uh, so we can say at any given time, a particle can occupy only one position, but the graph is indicating that the particle is occupying two different position at the same time. So this graph is not possible. Now let us see the second question. So here we have speed along y-axis and time along x-axis, right? But what is happening here? It is showing negative speed. But can speed be negative? No, speed can never be negative. Because we know speed is equal to distance by time or we can say total path length by time. Distance or path length can never become negative, right? So speed can also never become negative. But the graph is showing negative speed, which is not possible. So we can say this graph is also not possible. Moving on to the next question, we are given with a velocity time graph, right? Similarly, how we explain the first question, let me take it the same manner. Let me assume the time is two seconds. Let me assume the time over here is two seconds. Okay. And let me assume the velocity over is 5 meters per second and the velocity over is minus 5 meters per second. Right? What can we understand from this? At any time, the particle is having velocities in opposite direction. Right? That is positive 5 meters per second and negative 5 meters per second. Is it possible? A particle cannot have velocities in opposite direction at the same time. So, again, this graph is also not possible. The particle cannot have velocities in opposite direction at the same time. So, the third graph is, is also not possible. Moving on to the fourth question. So, here we are given with a velocity time graph. 
from the nature itself we can see we can understand that it represents one dimension motion let us see the next question here we are given with path length versus time to explain this let me consider the same example when i'm moving from a to b what happens the path length will increase if i'm remaining at rest at position b what happens the path length will remain a constant right but will it decrease with time the path length can never decrease with time even if the body is at rest right so what can you understand from this what what can you see from this graph here it is showing initially the path length was constant right so after some time what is happening the path length is decreasing with time but is it possible the path length can never decrease with time so we can say this graph is also not possible right moving on to the next question here we are given with time along y axis and position along x axis so it is again an xt graph right so like we explained the first question how can we solve this let me assume a time say time t is equal to one second so what can we understand from this the particle ha is having two positions two positions let me take this as x1 and x2 but is it possible for a particle to have two positions at a given instant of time it is not possible so we can say this graph is also not possible next question a train 100 meter long is moving with a speed of 60 km per hour in what time shall it cross a bridge 1 km long so we are given with the length of the train l1 is equal to 100 meter it is moving with the speed 60 km per hour so we can say speed equal to 60 km per hour now we have to convert the 60 km per hour into meter per second because we have to always solve the numericals in SI unit and the SI unit of speed is meter per second right so we have to multiply 60 with 5 by 18 so some of you may, might have how, how I got 5 by 18 we have 1 kilometer per hour kilometer we can convert it into meters that is 1000 meter 1000 meter by how are converting into second one hour equal to 3600 seconds so i can write 3600 seconds right now cancelling out the zeros and cancelling out two here it will be 5 and 18 so we'll be getting how much 5 by 18 meters per second this is how i got 5 by 18 okay so now here we can cancel out six if we cancel out six we'll be getting three we will be getting ten so if we multiply we'll be getting 50 by 3 meter per second so we got speed v is equal to 50 by 3 meter per second now we are given with length of the train l2 is equal to one kilometer again we have to convert the kilometer into meters we'll be getting one kilometer is equal to thousand meter right now let me consider a small figure let me assume this is the bridge it length is uh, one kilometer right this is the train 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 100 meter right for the train to cross this bridge how much distance should it cover when this point let me take this is a this is b when this point reaches here what happens we can say the train has covered a distance one kilometer right but for the train to cross this bridge how much should it cover it has to cover the length of the train as well that is 100 meter the length of the train as well so we can say the length to be covered to cross the bridge is how much length of bridge plus length of train so we can say the distance to be covered l is equal to how much l1 plus l2 which is equal to 100 plus 1000 that is 1100 meters so you have to keep in mind whenever you are given with a train bridge question the distance to, uh, the distance to be covered is the length of the train plus length of bridge so now we got the distance to be covered and the speed of the train right now we can find the time required that will be equal to l by v 
that is the distance covered by speed will give the time required to cross this bridge right so if we just substitute we will be getting 1100 divided by v that is 50 by 3 so we can cancel out 1 0 then cancelling out 5 i'll be getting 22 3 going up i'll be getting 22 into 3 that is 66 second so 66 second is the time taken by the train to cross this bridge next question a swimmer speed in the direction of flow of river is 8 meter per second and against the flow of river is 4 meter per second calculate the swimmer speed in still water and the speed of flow of river so let me assume the speed of swimmer is vs and that of river is vr in the first part it is given swimmer speed in the direction of flow of river so the swimmer is moving along the direction of river flow so we can take vs plus vr will be equal to how much 8 meter per second so vs plus vr equal to 8 meter per second and in the second part it is given the swimmer is moving against the river flow so we can write vs minus vr equal to how much 4 meter per second 4 meter per second let me keep this as equation 1 and this as equation 2 so what are we asked to find we have to calculate the swimmer speed in still water which means the speed of the swimmer right and the speed of flow of river that is vr right so we are asked to find vs and vr so let's see to find vs let me add both the equation equation 1 plus 2 so what will happen vr will get cancelled out so we'll be getting 2 vs will be equal to 8 plus 4 that is 12 right so we'll be getting vs equal to 12 by 2 that is 6 meter per second now to get vr let me subtract so i'll be getting 1 minus 2 will be equal to how much vs vs will get cancelled out and vr minus minus vr so what happens we'll be getting vr plus vr so i can write 2 vr will be equal to how much 8 minus 4 that is 4 so we'll be getting vr equal to how much 2 meter per second so we got vs is equal to 6 meter per second and vr is equal to 2 meter per second so this is today's video so we have solved some numericals i hope it is clear to you if you have any doubts regarding the numericals discussed please let us know in the comments below thank you